On your way to Heathmore, I take it. Perhaps you hope for riches or glory, huh? Trust me, you will only find your own demise. The war will devour you like a hungry beast. How do I know? I keep my eyes and ears open. And, well, I got to experience some of the insanity there myself. My name is Yin Chen. It has been ages since I left this dung hole. When I first arrived on Heathmore's shores, it was as a member of Bu Yin's crew. The Pirate Queen told us we would thrive in the chaos of these lands. But all I saw was death and misery. And it got even worse when the War of Faith started. After three ancient relics were found, a cult known as the Servants of the Stake claimed their reappearance was a sign that great change was on the horizon, and that only those who believe would be allowed to witness it. They practiced dark rituals and impaled those who would not join them. I couldn't look away anymore, so I did what I thought was right. I never believed in Horkos, or the Order's ideals. But their Inquisitors were the only ones doing something about the spreading madness. Yet not much time had passed until I realized what the Inquisition was truly about. We were not supposed to protect the innocent. We were only here to strengthen the Order's influence in Heathmore. I watched warriors I first thought noble saviors, slaughtering commoners and cultists alike. There was only so much my heart could bear, so I defected. One day, the Horkos dogs caught me and wanted to punish me for my desertion. They held a sickening display of power, called it a trial. In reality, it was an execution in which those accused of heresy were to kill each other. When I was shoved into the arena, I refused to fight. I told the Order's victims not to throw away their lives, and at least for this day, unite against a common enemy. If I'm honest, I was not expecting that to work, but I'm glad it did. In the chaos, I took my chance and grabbed the relics, the reasons for this mess. I brought these cursed things far away. Some were hidden from power-hungry eyes and twisted minds. From what I've heard, it didn't take long after the War of Faith was over for more atrocities to be committed. The warmonger of Vela, a former Inquisitor, was sailing west of Heathmore. She and her conquistadors were sent by Astria to raid a civilization in the New World the Aztec Empire. The stories I was told of the Aztecs are fascinating. They speak of Tenochtitlan, a massive city in the heart of their land. There they stored unimaginable wealth as tribute to their gods. Immense amounts of gold which once belonged to other civilizations the Aztecs conquered. The pirate I used to be would have leapt at the opportunity to get her hands on even a small piece of it. But Vela and her lot were followers of Horkos. Just stealing the gold wasn't enough for them. When they arrived at Tenochtitlan, the warmonger led a surprise attack right into the Empire's heart. Her conquistadors were raiding, pillaging, and murdering. They took all the gold they could carry and left the once great city in ruin. The surviving Aztecs wanted revenge. And so, an ocelot, a hunter by the name of Mixquat, made a plan. While the Horkos warriors loaded their ships with the treasures, eager to leave, he let himself get captured by them. It was a gambit. A distraction, you see. For prior to his capture, he had given the other ocelot instructions, and a map to Heathmore. Vela took him as trophy, claiming he was the last of his people. 
he was to be executed by Astria herself. The warmonger thought this would secure her a place by her idol's side. What she didn't know was that the remaining Ocelot would follow them to her fortress on the sea near Ashfeld. When the conquistadors arrived at their home, they held a feast. While they were celebrating the crimes committed overseas, the big golden cage in which Mixquat waited was hung up for all to see. Everyone drank and stuffed their stomachs. In the midst of the night, the other Ocelot arrived in their boats. And when the sun rose, hell broke loose. The Ocelot warriors attacked the sleeping conquistadors and any guests who were at the castle. It was a bloodbath. The limbs were chopped off and bodies were defiled. Mixquat was freed by his men and went to find Vela. He found her at the shore, fleeing the massacre. The two fought, but eventually Vela managed to escape. They say that Mixquat is hunting her to this day. After their vengeance, some of the Ocelot banded together and mourned their fallen empire. Others left to find any conquistadors who escaped them. Their grudge runs deeper than any other. When Astria arrived at Vela's castle, she found the gold she was promised. The bloodied corpses of the conquistadors decorating it likely didn't bother her. It seemed she only cared about the wealth and what she could do with it. The gold ended up in the pockets of those allied to the Order of Horkos. A group of Wu Lin elite warriors used their share to host the Hungry Ghost Festival, an old tradition to honor their ancestors. Though the festivities ended in a horrifying way, I've heard. You see, the Hungry Ghost Festival has rules. Standing and celebrating close to the water is said to be dangerous. One should stay indoors at night and avoid wandering shadows. And the most important rule? Do not eat any of the food placed on the altars. The Wu Lin elite sent invitations throughout Heathmore. Especially the poor and starving folk were invited. Not as honored guests, but as bait. As one would expect, the many attendees, not understanding the customs of this festival, were breaking rules left and right. The stories become weird from here on. Survivors claimed that a malevolent creature rose from the lower realm, the white bone spirit. With her magic, she trapped warriors in a strange theater. There they had to reenact the falsified story of Sun Wukong, the Monkey King, to taint and mock his legend. While the white bone spirit narrated the play, the festival guests had to fight illusions conjured by the demon. All while the Wu Lin elite watched. But just as the remaining warriors thought their souls to be doomed, the real Monkey King stepped in and ruined the spirit's show. The survivors described the fight between the two as if they were witnessing a horrifying fairy tale. The white bone spirit showed her true form. Not even those who summoned her were safe from her wrath. If we are to believe those reports, Sun Wukong and the guests who were still alive defeated the creature and sent her back to the underworld. A wild tale, if you ask me. But looking at what happened soon after, I wonder if this whole thing was nothing but a mere distraction from the true evil that was brewing in Heathmore. With the remaining Aztec gold, the Order of Horkos managed to raise an army. This massive host marched into Valkenheim, the homeland of the Vikings. There they wiped out one clan after another. Many towns fell into their hands without a fighting chance. Moldar, a small village, was about to meet the same fate. But this time, the Order gave the leaders a choice. To submit to them, or to die. Had this been just an isolated clan, it would have been an obvious decision. But to the leaders of Moldar, this was not as easy. 
their chieftain, an elderly man named Skard, and his Vikings had sworn an oath to the Chimera Alliance, the covenant that tries to keep the Order of Horkos at bay and bring peace to the factions. He would never break the promise he made to Holden Cross and the Chimera Elders. But the Highlander Maddox, a brother to Skard, was not convinced. To him, it felt wrong to doom a whole village for an alliance that couldn't even help them in their time of need. And so he betrayed Skard. When the Horkos army arrived at the gates, the Vikings who followed Maddox battled against those loyal to the chieftain. The Highlander, known for slaying a saber-toothed tiger back when he was surviving in the frost of Valkenheim, killed the chieftain. He took control and became a Horkos figurehead, ruling the village. The Way of the Fang replaced the peaceful and calm life of the people of Moldar. But one who still stood against Maddox was able to flee, Skard's daughter, Katla. After she survived in the freezing cold for a long time, Holden Cross found the woman in the wilds. He sent her across the northern border to find a group of mercenaries, the Varangian guards. After weeks of traveling, Katla finally found the warrior's camp, and they welcomed her into their midst. She trained with them and was taught Greek by their leaders, and soon she was ready to take their pledge. With this, Katla's new life began and the first thing she did as a Varangian guard was to hire the mercenaries and lead them to Valkenheim to take back her village. On one fateful night, the Varangian guards arrived at Moldar. When most were sleeping, they attacked. Maddox's warriors were taken by surprise. Many of them died or fled the battle. Pushed into a corner, the traitorous Highlander offered the guards more payment than Katla did but they remained loyal to Skard's daughter. Katla defeated Maddox, but instead of killing him, he was branded an oathbreaker and imprisoned, so that he would spend the rest of his days in shame. With that, Moldar was reclaimed, a final injustice at last made right. And after a long time, hope, began taking root in the hearts of many once more. And who knows, perhaps Heathmore has a chance for peace.